before we start, uh, we talk, uh, I mean, we, we brief a bit about the publications. Uh, uh, we take maybe 10 minutes. Huh? Okay. So uh, in publications, uh, we have proceeding, we have journal. Proceeding is usually some of the so-called the pilot result. Uh, so-called the pilot result uh, for, for, for a specific whatsoever research. Uh. So the, usually the number of pages, the the usually the number of pages the quality um, is not so high la. okay um, especially the number of data set is not so high so so um, and it is usually uh, you haven't done anything I mean you did not complete the full research yet so you go for go for proceeding usually for master and PhD we will join the conference uh, and conference the main objective of the conference is to present your paper to the public because conference uh, whenever you submit you will have a review and then come back to you you do the correction and then later on you will need to present at the conference uh, depends virtual or physical uh. so when you present the audience is from all over the world usually the conference would be international uh. so many different uh, participants some for international and then they will ask any question ask any question so for example you have uh, 10 minutes to present after 10 minutes then there will be maybe another 10 minutes for q a so everyone can ask in the hall everyone in the hall can ask of course uh, you, you don't you won't be given marks uh, uh, but you have to present so they will ask questions and you try your best to answer it's okay if you cannot answer it's okay don't worry, but then don't stand over there. La. You, maybe you can say, uh, oh, uh, this is a very good question. So perhaps I will back to you later on. Um, and then you politely ask, uh, later on you politely follow up with that uh, researcher. La. It's, it's best, la. don't stand over there and do nothing. La. Okay. So usually in the conference, we have best paper and best presenter. Okay. Uh, I, I, I've, been, I've been awarded by best presenter for two continuous uh, publications uh, hi, quite good okay um, that is under uh, when I PhD la. so um, another thing is best paper la, during the conference best paper in different track that is conference the main purpose of conference is to is to gain network la, I would say is to gain network la. Um, it's okay if you want to do your everything uh, in under your own heart under your roof it's okay but sometimes researcher, uh, we want to gain, uh, you know, we want to discuss with some other people to gain more knowledge, to gain more idea and etc. So that is the main purpose of conference is to build network. Okay. For, for journal, um, as I mentioned just now, we have several uh, big publisher, but usually we will go for, at least, uh, at least when you publish journal, uh, go for Scopus. Uh, um, but to be frank, uh, it's quite difficult to publish in ISI journal. Um, Scopus journal, for example, um, journal of technology. Journal of technology is one of the local journal by UTM, I think. This is the journal of tech. I should go journal of technology homepage. This is uh, one of the journal by local and it is Scopus Index. But don't confuse with this Q3. Uh, eventually in Scopus Index, uh, oh, maybe I should share my screen as well so that everyone can see. So this is uh, one of the local from UTM. Uh, uh, then over here shows Q3 la, from for engineering in miscellaneous. So all these are, are, are so-called subject area, la, which means you have different, you know, you have your journal in computer science, journal in medical, journal in uh, maybe biomedic, different area. So this is under an engineering miscellaneous. So it is Q3, but this Q3 is powered by Scopus, which means uh, Scopus is the one who index this one, but it is not indexed in the uh, okay, 
we have we actually have another let me open but uh, actually uh, anything in clarivate uh, is subscription uh, which means you need to pay uh. we call it as jsdr uh. okay so this is the jcr by 20 uh, in the year of 2020 so you this is the journal which is with the highest corpus index which is 500 something uh, not 200 500 something uh. okay this is a uh, uh, surgeon surgeon uh, <clears throat> surgeon uh, in oncology uh, okay by really okay so this is uh, basically the jcr journal citation report uh, would be updated every year june okay Every year, June, they will compile the report, and you then this uh this uh interfactor will be will be will be uh update lah. Depends on what is the interfactor lah. Okay, but uh I would say if the best uh, uh go for go for Scopus first. Depends on the quality of your finding. If the quality of your finding is okay, then you go for interfactor. For example, this one. Mm, but this journal is quite uh take very long time. Uh, uh, the process is very slow. Basically, uh, those that review your paper will be the expert from some other country. Uh, wouldn't be Malaysia. Uh, at least wouldn't be Malaysia. Wouldn't be the same country as the author. Okay, If the author is from Malaysia, India, and Pakistan, so for sure the author, the reviewer will not be chosen from these three countries. And then the reviewer will be somewhere chosen by the journal. Okay, Even though the editor all these editors, usually they are professor from some other well-known university. Usually it's professor. Lah. Okay. So, so um, yeah, this is uh, so-called uh, journal publications. Uh. Why we, you need to publish in uh, those journal indexed by Scopus and those, in, uh, those uh, journal indexed by um, Clarivate is because this reflects the quality of the journal. If your work is good enough, so this kind of journal will review your work and will ask for you to maybe corrections. And then if the work is sufficient quality, they will accept your work. Else, uh, they will reject. Uh, okay. But uh, nonetheless, don't be disappointed if you get rejected. Because during my PhD, I get rejected from many journals. I get rejected from many, many journals. It's normal. To be frank, it's normal. But of course, some, some people might so, I mean, very good in writing, especially your grammar. I found that uh, maybe most of you can speak very well in English, uh, but when it comes to technical writing, uh, the language is not, you know, not technical sound. Like you're telling story, uh, chatting with your friends, something like that. You all can speak very well in English, uh, but when it comes to technical writing, uh, it is different. It is different. So, um, yeah, the way of your writing, is part of the uh, part of the justifications uh, when you go for uh, maybe Q4, Q3 journal is okay. They will try to accept, but maybe they will ask you to prove it. But uh, for Q1, Q2, uh, if the uh, once uh, the uh, journal editor receive your receive your uh, manuscript, uh, if first of first thing, if it is out of the format, uh, directly will reject. Even though I'm very um. I feel annoying when the when the when the uh, all the alignment uh, I mean is aligned did not follow the template and etc. Especially when the figure captions come before the figure, the table caption come after the table. This is very common mistake and very fundamental. And spelling figures one and two should be as you know this kind um try to avoid this kind of fundamental error. If you cannot even um, proofread your thesis, uh, uh, your, your manuscript, uh, I believe that would, that one would be very limited like the quality. The delivery of the uh, of the of the of the paper would be very, very limited. Like. Okay. So yeah, but for your FYP, I don't think it is a compulsory to publish. But I think my 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 university, it is compulsory to write a technical paper. Up to you, publish or not, but it's compulsory to write. So um, maybe you have a question that why you need to write 
uh, submit to conference or or journal. Uh, I mean, why not submit to ISI? Because most of the time, uh, we found that the student uh, did not really focus doing the FIP. Start to do FIP only like four weeks ago, especially for the second semester. So the quality of the, you know, we feel like uh, you, 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 you put a lot of effort in your FIP, but at last, uh, the FIP doesn't, doesn't why, why my lecturer did not appreciate my FIP or uh, something like that. Maybe uh, if, if let's say later on, you guys did uh, further pursue your master or PhD, uh, you would, and then you look back your FIP report, you yourself will also laugh at it. To be frank, uh, even I myself, uh, when I convert from master to PhD, uh, I even though I think that report is very lousy, uh, everything, even the vocab, everything um, is very, I, I don't know how to say uh, that is it. Uh, okay, so yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, to answer your question regarding the eye indicator, uh, those uh, for those um, that, uh, this one everyone pay attention. Uh, for those that, uh, uh, let's say, uh, touch wood, uh, you get diagnosed with COVID uh, when you taking your face-to-face -face final exam for last, sem last year, last SEM students, uh, you are entitled to take the uh, exam in the next retake and reset exam. But that one is not considered retake and reset. Uh. The retake and reset exam should be in January and in, yeah, for, for this semester should be in June. Uh. This, uh, this SEM should be in June. And the next SEM should be in January, something like that. For all, this is only entitled for last year, last SEM. Uh. For those which is not last year, last SEM, they must take the, they must take the examination in the next coming semester. But it is given I indicator. I indicator will not affect your CGPA. So will not affect the PTPTN, okay? So since the for last year, last semester, you guys are, are okay to, uh, to take the exam in receipt and read, uh, I mean, June examination, so it should be okay. Lah. But if touch wood, uh, you get COVID again. Uh, so I also don't know how <laughs> to be frank. Uh, if you get COVID for twice in you know, uh, between two months time, uh, I think, I don't think there is another examination. Uh, but I try to ask this question, uh, but uh, so far this is the reply from higher management. Okay, so don't worry, uh, you won't be delayed in graduation. But please, uh, at least you take at either one of the examinations. Okay. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay. I think we shall start here, uh, question seven for uh, tutorial four. Okay, uh, this one I think I, I, I can answer. Uh, we, uh, later on, we start with another uh, tutorial. Um, state the performance criteria for an optimal age detection of an image. Justify which type of the age detector can fulfill the mentioned performance criteria. So basically, this is uh, from the uh, one day when I obtain the network. Okay, basically this, this is uh this can be retrieved from the from the lecture notes. Uh. performance idea for optimal detection uh, would be good detection, good localization, single response constraint, and canny edge detector would be the best. Okay, um, of course you can justify uh, because uh, in your exam uh, those questions that ask you to justify uh, usually we don't have. I mean. For example, in your lab report or assignment, uh, some question ask you to justify, give solution, right? Uh, those without any, because you have many different uh, approach to resolve a specific uh, questions. But in examinations, uh, usually the so-called open-ended questions, uh, they would have their schema, they will have their uh, answer scheme, uh, okay, so-called the schema answer. Uh. So uh, for example, it, even though you can justify uh, good detections, good localization, but you are proposing something else for, for example, robot age detection or maybe pure wit, uh, for sure that will be wrong. Okay, not because you cannot justify, it's because this is based on the facts after the performance analysis and etc. cetera, any age detector would be the better, better when compare, compared to uh, Sobel and etc. Okay, so please uh, bear in mind on this one. Uh, uh, and for those questions that ask you to justify, usually it would be 
uh, four marks and above. Uh, wouldn't be one or two marks. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, good detections. The optimal detector must minimize the probability of false positive detecting spurious edge caused by noise as well as the a false negative missing real edge. So good localization, which means you local localization is which means you know where is the point for you to locate the edge. Uh, those are called good localization. So good localization, the edge detected must be as close as possible to the true edge. Edge is uh, thinning and linking. Single response constraint, the detector must return one point only for each true edge. Because uh, if you return many, uh, many points for one detection, uh, which means your edge will be very thick. Uh, okay, your edge will be very thick. So for a good edge detection, uh, usually we want only very thin and precise edge. We don't want the edge. Um, it is, depends on application. You can actually apply maybe some of the morphological operation, maybe uh, dilations to dilate the edge, but you don't want to get a very uh, thick edge because thick edge doesn't re thick edge refer to very low sensitivity la, which means uh, your edge detection your, your current edge algorithm edge detection algorithm is not able to perform at a very high sensitive level so um, that is the mean uh, that is minimize the number of local maximum around true edge created by noise so can the edge detector found a linear continuous filter that maximize the three uh, given criteria so four step. This is these are the four steps for each uh, Kenny. Uh. Filtering, smoothing, suppress a noise as much noise as possible without destroying the true edges. Remove noise and improve the performance of edge detection. Step two, enhance edge enhance. Apply the gradient operator and three detect detection keeps only the edge point and eliminate false edge point. So this is uh, the 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 part where you have single uh, response constraint and the Step four, localized com uh, computer location at orient orientation of H, which is the good localization. Okay. Any questions for this one? This one should be no issue like, because it is directly from the lecture note. Okay. But of course, uh, if, if let's say come to this step, uh, you have to know. Like, okay. You have to know this step. Okay, tutorial five, image transformation. Uh, okay, this is about uh, the DCT, D, 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 uh, DFT, and also uh, DWT. Distinguish the image transformation between DFT, DCT, and DWT. This one should be easy. La. Um, the fundamental one should be DFT, followed by DCT and DWT. So uh, basically, yeah, when you look into this one, uh, you sh I mean, even though I did not memorize, uh, but maybe I... But this is the second semester I I, I teaching this uh, subject. Uh. Even even like that, I can I, I can roughly know uh, uh, I mean sometimes uh, I will not recommend you all to memorize. But yeah, if you are not familiar, then have to uh. Okay. Um, when you look into this one, uh, basically you can um, start to I mean distinguish the image transformation. Uh, but in terms of the limitations, the advantage, and also the application. Of course, we don't have uh, application for DFT. Yeah, DFT does have its own application, but it's not within the context of image compression. Okay, so DFT, we did not uh, mention what is the application, but for DCT, we have JPEG, uh, JPEG compression. GWT, we have JPEG 2000. And DFT, it is involved the calculation of complex and also real parts. But in this ED, we only use the real part. So since we omit the uh, uh, omit the com, I mean the imaginary part, uh, the com the computation would be uh, far more simpler when you compare to DFT. Okay, and in and later on DFT and DCT, we have only the frequency domain. We don't have uh, any spatial domain. So this is this would be the uh, limitation of DFT and DCT. So when you compare these two with DWT. Basically, uh, you know, like, DWT, uh, 
hold the information of both the spatial and auto frequency domain. So from here, actually you can get maybe five, at least five points. Uh, so five marks will be there. Uh, okay. And it's okay for you if, uh, I mean, if the question asks for differentiate, um, uh, discriminate, uh, explain, you can use table, you know, you can draw a simple table to give the answer, it's okay, okay? So distinguish between these two, uh, so DFT maps a complex signal information. Usually uh, the skill to answer the question is that First of all, whenever you see DFT, DCD, DWT, first of all, explain what is DFT, DCD, and DWT. And then uh, you explain, uh, you distinguish the difference, and then give example. This is the very, very common method we are, uh, I mean, we use uh, to answer any question. I think SAS start from form five and Computica Moral. This is a very simple method, you know. Kepercayaan kepada Tuhan, then uh, you give the definition, you explain a bit, and then give example. This is easiest way, okay? Very cliche method. So again, uh, map the comp uh, complex signal image into frequency domain using a set of complex exponent uh, function. So this is MPEG audio. Um, yeah, this is using in the MPEG audio, we are using the uh, GFT. Uh, but of course, I did not very really emphasize on this one uh, because Yes, it is using DFT, but uh, we did not really learn how DFT is integrated in the MPEG audio compression uh, uh, workflow. Okay, so DCT um, maps image into frequency domain. But if let's say, uh, um, I would say you best not to give this one now because the question is asking image transformation. Okay, this is audio. Okay, uh, not to put this one. If you put video, it's okay, but not audio. Okay, um, DCT map image into frequency domain just like Fourier transform, but using only the real value cosine function. So heart of the JPEG and also MPEG video. And DWT map image into spatial frequency domain. So DCT is similar to GFT, except all the value of DCT are real instead of complex. Okay, DFT uh, did involve both complex and also in, uh, complex and also real value but DCT only the real. Unlike DFT and unlike DFT and of course DCT as well, the DWT in fact, the DWT refer not just a single transform, but rather a set of transform, each real, each with a different set of wavelet basis function. Okay. Uh, you can also mention, uh, you can also mention <coughs> DWT is meant for uh, JPEG 2000 and DWT uh, have both the spatial and frequency domain or spatial and frequency information, but in fact, DFT and DCT only the frequency. Okay, JPEG 2000 was created by JPEG committee to replace JPEG. Compare between JPEG and JPEG 2000 image conversion scheme and justify which image conversion scheme is better to apply for obtaining a good image quality even with low C compression. Okay, let me call someone from online. Yao Ping Long, you can share screen or put the answer in the chat box, either way. Are you there? Okay, um, Yi Hang, Hua, is, is it Hua, Yi Hang? Can you share the answer for second question two? Wow, well, you all not share at all. Share one, share one tongue. What, what, what? Uh, yeah. Oh, I haven't read this part. Uh. Wow. Then where are you? Uh? <laughs> M. 
Am I too fast uh, in tutorial? Okay, I think I already uh, quite slower. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wish to know, uh, Shevon, uh, which part are you? Uh, I mean, now, now you are at which tutorial? Now it's only tutorial five. Uh, I think, I think I've been quite slow in tutorial already. Uh, because now it's week ten, I should be done tutorial five already. Okay, okay. Jetpack use DCT where DCT transform a signal or image from spatial domain to the frequency domain. Jetpack use DCT. The DCT transfer a signal image from spatial domain to frequency network. No longer able to obtain the spatial. Okay. Jetpack 2000 DWT will transform the filter blind technology. Address the brainwave from the da 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 da. Um, I think your answer is not complete yet, right? For the animation, the what? Is it from lecture notes? Huh? For the image, the output of the transform show the energy of the Okay, okay. Basically, uh, this one Japan and Japan two thousand uh is actually referring to, uh, DCT and DWT la. Okay, the main uh because the core of Japan is DCT, the core of Japan two thousand is DWT. But basically, uh, when you compare in terms of the output quality, uh, the D uh Japan two thousand would be better when you compare with Japan because the Japan two thousand you hold both the information. Okay. Uh, the, the more the information, the better, you would expect a better quality. La. Okay, but for Jetpack, um, it is using DCT, and if the compression ratio is too high, so you would uh, see blocky field because it is compressed. I mean, it is processed based on 8 times 8 uh, pixel block or 16 times 16. Okay, so um, yeah, thank you for your answer. Justify which image conversion better to apply the other. Okay, even with low C, low C. Okay. So for the uh, second question, uh, B, uh, it is asking if both are loosey uh, because JPEG confirm is loosey, but JPEG 2000 can be loosey and looseless. Uh, it has two different schemes. So uh, since JPEG are uh, only available in loosey compression, uh, so it's not fair when you compare looseless, uh, I mean JPEG 2000 looseless with JPEG uh, loosey compression. So um, that, is, that is why uh, the question asks even with loosey compression. So when you compare JPEG, which is Lucy, and also JPEG 2000, which is Lucy, you will find that the JPEG 2000 still perform better uh, than the JPEG. Even eventually, both are using the same uh, compression factor. For example, uh, 10 to 1, uh, you were able to find JPEG 2000 would be better. Uh, the blocky field would be uh, minimi minimal, I would say. Okay, thank you for your answer, Yihan. State the, state the steps that are performed in Lucy compression of JPEG. Okay. This is the step uh, that you need to perform in Lucy compression. This is very important. Okay. Please pay attention. Okay. Okay. Anyone uh, for this? For this, uh, let me check. Uh. Yu Yang Chua. Are you what? Uh? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, uh, I cannot recognize name. I cannot memorize name. Uh, I can recognize face only. Uh. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Can you can you share? Do you want to share your screen? I think this one is better to share screen, right? Um. Let me stop sharing. So the uh this uh is very big portion uh you know it wouldn't be five marks lah. Okay. If given in the examination, would be five marks only. Like. That's the step that step that are performed in loosely compression of JPEG. Okay. You may share your screen whenever you ready. That's the step that performed in loosely compression JPEG. Okay. Um. Okay, basically, uh, the question asked like that, uh, your answer should be correct because it's asked to step, uh, I mean, 
uh, state the step right. Um, but uh, of course, uh, in your examination, uh, you have to write in the full. Uh, depends on the marks. I would say depends on the mark. If the marks is you know maybe the three marks, uh, then you can you can you can do so uh, Okay. But uh, but nonetheless, uh, for example, um, state the five basic uh, element of multimedia. What is the five basic element? Mm. Five basic element in multimedia. We learned in chapter one, right? What is it? Something like that. If let's say the uh, uh, the uh, the question asks, uh, state the five I uh, mean state the five basic element in multimedia. Let's say lah, okay, or something else. Uh, but ask for a specific number, for example, five factor, three factor, something like that. But the question, but the uh, mark, marks given is only one or two marks. Uh, you still have to give five factors. Uh, you understand? Okay, because the mark given would be different. Okay, please uh, do not do not see that. Oh, the, the marks given only two, uh, but they ask for five, uh, then you only give two. Then you will lose to, uh, to two marks. Okay, something like that. It depends on the question complexity. For example, those questions, those, uh, you know, uh, state, uh, state uh, how many or uh, uh, how many eyes uh, and how many nose and how many uh, mouth uh, a, per, a human got. Then you only give one or two. I mean, you only give uh, how many eye, how many nose. Uh, you don't give mouth. Uh, for sure, you're wrong. Uh, because sometimes it is depends on the complexity of the question. Not a must five points would be referring to five marks. Uh, okay. Um, BCT quantization. Zigzag ordering. Okay. For this one, uh, uh, partially correct is that uh, because after. After quantization, you will split into two, uh, two right? The DC and AC, right? So DC, you have uh, this uh, ILE, but uh, sorry, DC, you have uh, DPCM, but uh, AC, you have RLE and also zigzag ordering, and then uh, entropy coding and etc. Okay, so uh, it is not really, uh, you know, one, one, one straight pipeline, uh, but instead, uh, after quantization, uh, it will split into two parallel lines. Okay, make sure you uh, draw the parallel line accordingly. Okay, thank you for your answer. Okay, um, yeah, I, I did not put in the so basically, you refer to uh, your uh, chapter six, page 33, uh, 73 onwards. Lah. Okay. So basically, yeah, for this one, you will start with the. You will start with uh, YCBCR. You will start with YCBCR. I mean, uh, convert your 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 image in the YCBCR and then subsampling CV and CR. As we mentioned, uh, uh, this, I mean, in this uh, afternoon lecture, CBCR are prominence. So, uh, I mean, uh, more to color variations. Uh, so human eye is not so um, sensitive uh, is, uh, into, this, into, this, uh, into this part. Uh, so it's uh, more likely to be, uh, can be subsampled. Uh, okay, and we made only white. So this white sample, would be uh, partitioned into eight times eight pixel block, okay? And this eight times eight pixel block, uh, if let's say you, if let's say, if let's say the, uh, I mean, the size of the image uh, is cannot compatible, I mean, not the not divisible by the eight, uh, you will need to perform uh, padding. Depends on what type of padding, but by default should be zero padding, okay? After that, uh, for each of each each of it, uh, you will need to perform the, what is the name? Uh, you know, deduct by one two eight. Uh. Uh, I forgot what is the name for this one. Uh. Okay, you need to divide by one two eight so that you perhaps uh, in this step you will get the negative value. Okay, this is the only step that you will get possible get a negative value. And then later on, you will go to quantization table. The quantization table is given by JPEG. If let's say in exam, so you will be, this will be given. Uh. Okay, after quantization, you want to split to two which is the DC value and AC value. So the DC value, you want to, you have to go through the DPCM, DPCM, right? Okay. And then after that, uh, the AC value will go through um, zigzag and then uh, 
RLE, and then you both of these will come together and then entropy coding. So you have those so called the Huffman coding table, um, you know, find the value, all these tables, and then get your final binary code, which is uh, one and zero, one and zero. Okay. So that is it. Discuss on the effect of increasing the value of coefficient in the quantization table of the DCT coder. Okay. Um, this quantization table is not the quantization that we mentioned in audio processing. Uh. Please do not confuse. Uh. Although uh, we are using the same key terms. Uh, but this quantization table is referring to uh, JPEG. Okay. JPEG compression. So uh, what would be the effect of increasing the value? This, I think uh, this one is quite... Um, logical thinking lab. Uh, when you divide some divide something else with a larger value, or you expect to get a smaller number. For example, one divided by one, you will get one. But one divided by ten, you will get zero point one, something like that. So when this when the table in uh when the when the uh, value of coefficient of this table increases, uh, you would expect to, for example, from ten to one hundred, you would expect you would expect to get a smaller value. Okay. So which means that the compression factor is higher and higher, okay? But uh, at the same time, if the quantization table is, I mean, all are one, uh, all are one, uh, because uh, which means uh, there is no uh, compression performed, no compression performed. Another thing is that you have to know, for example, this is a quantization table. The value over to this end uh, usually would be smaller, but the value to this end would be higher. What is the reason? What is the reason that the value at this end, which is the right bottom right hand side, usually would be higher? Let me pick someone to answer. Tai Xiu Xia. You can put this in the chat box. What, uh, let me repeat that. Uh, why is the, I mean, in the quantization table, uh, why is it usually all the value at this side uh, would be higher in value, uh, higher in number? Why? Are you there? Tai Xiu Chia. Xin Xin. Xin Shen Tan. are you there? Okay, good. Uh, what is the reason? Uh? Again, uh, uh, to discard height. Okay, great. Um, I, I, I wouldn't use the word discard. La. Uh, I would say uh, do to perform higher compression in terms of higher frequency information. Then um, I hope you all can continue to explain uh, uh, because you can uh, mention that uh, do uh, perform higher compression in terms of higher frequency information, continue to explain such that, uh, is, that this is because a uh, human eye is not sensitive to not sensitive to high high information, high frequency information. Because the main reason is that human eye is not sensitive to high frequency information. So during compression, we will see all this high frequency information as redundancy. This is the core reason. Because sometimes I found that um, when someone gives justification, when a student gives justification, uh, the answer is not really to the main point. Yes, it's correct. You are trying to discard high frequency information, but why? But why? You, you have to make your um, sentence or justification to be to complete the, for example, yeah, to decrease from what uh, to decrease the da 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 da. But why to decrease? You have to explain why. Okay, this is very useful. Uh, whenever, uh, especially when you buy bar or share, uh, later on during for F five year, always explain your sentence in. I mean, self content we call it self content, which means uh, after reading your sentence, uh, we know that all oh, what you are talking about. This is called self content. We don't want to have. After reading the questions, uh, I, I, I don't know which part you are referring to, okay? Okay, thank you for the answer. It's correct. Oh. 
Oh, let's look into the answer first. Oh, just now I, I, I explained wrongly. It should be chapter 4, page 41. I just now mentioned this one instead. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the answer, by increasing the value of coefficient in the quantization table of the DCT coder, the quantized DCT coefficient will become smaller because you divide something else with a larger number, which means the more compression is performed after quantization. So the relationship between the QUV and uh, F approximate U, uh, UV, the quant, uh, which is the quantized DCT coefficient, this value is inversely proportional to the QUV. In other words, compression ratio will be high if compared with this one to compare with uh, the original, I mean, before quantizer, okay? So um, you can explain using your own word. Lah. Okay, I do not encourage you all to memorize, but try to understand what this mean and then explain using your own words, okay? Ah, yeah, we don't flirt again. Okay, uh, uh, discuss on the effect that produced in the quantization if all the elements in the quantization table of DCT coded is R1. Okay, this one I already explained. Uh, when you divide something else with one, uh, for sure there is no compression. Uh, okay, uh, although it is very rare, but it still happens because um, it is not about it is not about the ideology. Uh, would it happen, but the theory, how it, it would be, okay? So the DCD coefficient of, of Fij for an 8, an 8 times 8 image block is given below. This one. So the quantization matrix Qij is given below. This one. So it da 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 round off to da 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 when da 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 Okay. Basically, ask you to do the full, the full uh, run length scanning, la. okay? Question like this are worth a lot of marks uh, because you need to do everything. Uh. But uh, if let's say this uh, such, I mean, uh, this kind of question are uh, given in, no matter what question given uh, in the examination, uh, always give the full answer, okay? Always give the full answer, which means uh, you show every step, okay? Try your best to show every step because for this one, uh, you need to calculate one by one, right? You know, 216, uh, 214 divided by 16, 34 divided by 12, uh, so make sure you write down everything now. because uh, if you did not write down, uh, I don't know, is it, did you really calculate or not? Uh, okay, remember write down. Eventually very simple, you know, like calculation of bit rate, uh, an example. Uh, so write down the, write down your calculations, okay? And always remember uh, in your examination, uh, for all calculations use four decimal place, four decimal place. Uh, okay, for this one, um, maybe you just give me the last answer we'll do, la. okay? Um, let me check, ah. Uh. Yen Chang So. Uh, are you there? Okay. I think you are the one every time join in the Google Meet earlier, sir. Even earlier than me. Um, okay. Sometimes uh, I'm quite excited to see you all at, at the final examination, sir. Uh, okay, let me check this one. Uh. Zero, four, zero, three. Uh, this one, uh, I think this one a bit. This one, is it two or negative two? Uh? Let me check. Uh. Should be negative two, right? <laughs> oh. 
for the question given. Because the original one is 12, I mean negative 25. So divide by 12 and you round off, you should be able to get something negative. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you for your answer. I will upload this answer uh, later on in the Google, I mean, in the Google Classroom, okay? But uh, try to recheck this one. Uh, if I'm wrong, please let me know. But I think it should be, uh, is it negative two or two? This one, what is your answer? Uh, should be negative two, uh. okay? Should be negative two, and yeah. So uh, that's all for this one. Um, should be very easy, la. okay. But of course, you don't confuse between all these symbols. Uh, all these symbols is actually this is the quantization table, this is the uh, DCT value, and then yeah, and then after that, you have uh, that's all, la. okay. Okay, thank you for the answer. Um, all right. So that's all for this one. Let us move to another one. Tutorial six. Okay, tutorial six is on morphological uh, image processing, which is uh, chapter seven. Uh, this chapter is important uh, uh, because this chapter is the fundamental in image processing. Uh, uh, when you know morphological operation, I would say you can solve a lot of image processing issue. Uh, okay, especially for low basic. Uh, because I found that um, even though last time I worked in uh, machine vision, uh, they are using the they are using the library to call all this. Of course, uh, we are, you are using my lab, right? They are using the uh, this one, uh, so called uh, open emission uresis, uh, uresis, uh, Halcon, uh, These are several. These are several uh, vision library which is uh, widely used in local. Okay, especially uresis, uh. I think uh, Vital Visions, uh, MI equipment, they are using uh, this, uh, this kind of, this kind of uh, the, uh, vision library, okay? So um, you have to know the basic uh, of the morphological operation is that you can solve a lot of issues, especially dealing with semicons, okay? You can use simple dilation, simple erosion to do a lot of things, okay? So, uh, but, uh, of course, uh, you have to be very firm, you know, in terms of the um, fundamental of dilation and erosion. Uh, because in examination, if let's say it's up here, uh, the question wouldn't be so easy. Uh, wouldn't be like, you know, a crawl and then, you know, ask you to do this and that. Exactly like the, exactly like the lecture notes. Uh, wouldn't be that simple. Okay. Eventually in real life application, uh, it is not that simple as well. Okay. Um, draw, draw, draw the process, draw the processing image after perform the perspective morphological operation of eye erosion, uh, which means you use this uh, structure element to perform erosion, dilation, opening, and closing. Okay, and then you have to yeah draw it uh. Anyone to share the answer? I think we will stop here after this question uh. Let me check uh. Uh, Zilim Lee. I think you need to share your screen. Would you mind to share your answer for this one? Zilim Lee. I haven't do okay. Uh, make sure you do well. I, I will see the tutorial at, I will take the tutorial as part of the revisions uh, because, um, it is in, um, I mean, those chapters we already teach. Ma. Book, Boon Kyung Ku, Boon Kyung Ku, Boon Kyung.
Are you there, Bun Kyung? Okay. Uh, have you done this one? Do you want to share your answer? Uh, but this one, I think you need to share screen. Uh. Haven't do, okay. Jamming, Jamming Lu. Okay. It's okay. La. Have you all done? Okay. Uh, but, but of course, uh, for this one, you don't need to show step by step. Uh. I mean, you know how you remove, uh, don't need to do something like that. Uh. Uh, you just need to draw the final answer you'll do. Okay. But make sure you draw the box accordingly. You don't chin chai draw the box. Uh. For example, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh. Eight times, eight, I think. Eight times, eight. Uh. Don't later on, after you, you know, apply this, uh, become 20 times 20 or, you know, seven times seven, uh, not, not something like that. Uh. Because not only the shaded region is important, uh, the number of box here also important. And also, do consider, do consider the padding. Okay. If let's say, uh, usually in morphological operation, you always need to do padding. Usually always need to do. But I think this one did not do padding, uh, which is wrong. Uh. Okay. Uh, you need to do padding. Uh. For example, this one, apply to this one. Yeah, yeah. Pardon? Oh, is it? Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So the uh, structure element is something like this one. Uh. So uh, most of the time you will start with the first one. It will start with this one. Okay, this one. So you will apply your structure elements here. Okay. So for sure, when you apply your structure elements here, and this is your origin, uh, if let's say like, this is your origin, uh, you apply your structure elements here. So you have to perform the padding here at this region. Okay. So if let's say uh, this structure element is something larger, you know, not three times three, but maybe four times, uh, five times five. Uh, uh, very rare that like you have a even number, usually it's odd number. Okay. And then make sure you perform the zero padding accordingly. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. If let's say you, uh, because I think most of the time you have to uh, perform the uh, zero padding. Uh, but of course, if you have, you know, so call your uh, structure element only this, only like something like this, uh, so you don't need to perform any. Uh. If let's say you have exceeding one box, uh, you have to perform the zero padding. Uh, if let's say you don't want to perform zero padding, you want to perform mirror whatsoever, it's okay. Okay, but make sure you perform the padding. So after you perform the padding, the number of uh, image, uh, I mean the size of the image uh, supposedly would be larger. Okay, if let's say later on in the final answer, you did not give the specific number of uh, box, uh, I mean the white region and also the gray region. Uh, so your answer should be, wrong okay your answer would be wrong la. okay uh understand what i mean can i get that okay for example you have two things to look uh, when you do this question uh. the first thing is the first thing is that have you done your padding have you done your padding the second thing is that, what is the size after you perform the padding? For this question, you should have another line on top, another line on bottom, another line at the left, another line at the right, right, for this question, okay? And the last thing is that, is the gray region here correct? Three things. Always remember to check these three things. Uh, if uh, any of it are uh, incorrect, then it should be incorrect the entire question. Okay. I don't really see this as separate. Uh, for example, you did padding. You did the, I mean, after that, uh, the, the, these two should be one in one set. Uh, 
if let's say you have to you have two padding and then you the final answer the size of the entire image is correct then perhaps you will give uh, some marks will be given if let's say your gray region here at the last at last step uh, is incorrect still able to get some mark but if let's say the padding you did not uh, you did do padding but at last uh, the size of the uh, entire image is incorrect and the gray region is incorrect so this one should be no marks uh, because padding and the size should be reflect each other okay so uh, this will be answer and i think you need to add another line uh, okay add another line one two three four five six seven eight yeah i did not add you should add another line okay should be no longer eight times eight lah. Okay, so this is just erosion and dilation and opening. Uh, uh, I, I mean, the question paper for sure will give you erosion plus dilation. You have to know, uh, okay, and closing as well. That's all. So um, we stop here and we will continue later on. Uh. Okay, any question before we end? I would say this is depends on the software, but I, I accept your answer. I accept your answer because in MATLAB, well, they did perform the padding and after perform the padding in at the end of the reason, I mean, after perform all everything morphology operation, uh, the padding would be omit. It would be omit, omit. Which means uh, your size, for example, 100 times 100, after you perform morphology operation, you wouldn't get more than that. Lah. Okay, so um, yeah. If you give me an uh, answer uh, with padding or without padding, I accept it. Because in some reference book, they ask for padding. They will remain it. Okay, but I cannot say the reference book is wrong. Okay, so um, I, I will accept this answer as well. Shaded area is the form, yes, yes. Oh, okay, should be shaded foreground. La. Okay, okay, you are correct. Okay, uh, later I'll amend this one. Should be shaded uh, foreground, not the background. La. Uh, because uh, if this is a background, uh, which means this is a foreground. La. So which means your is, you know, inverted. La. Okay, thank you for this one. I will amend this one. Okay, I'm not that tricky, lah. Okay, <laughs> I'm not that tricky, lah. So by by any chance, is it possible to delay the submission of deadline by lab report? No. Uh, the reason why I do not want to delay it because, uh, we have a fixed timeline to submit all the coursework. Okay, so uh, by by, uh, except you have a very solid reason, uh, For example, you know. Um, yeah, I, I've been, I, I do have some, uh, some students, uh, uh, some students uh, because of some accidents, uh, so he, admit, he admitted to hospital. So that one I accept. But um, you, you can try to email me with your reason. Let's see if I accept law. Okay. But most of the time, I won't accept it. Uh, okay. Because uh, somewhat, I have to consider the fairness throughout the entire class. Okay. So if let's say you have some unfortunate event happen, it's possible. Else, I don't think so. Okay, make sure you submit your report accordingly. If not, I will deduct the marks. Okay, uh, yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you, everyone. Any other questions regarding the submission or whatsoever? You can put in the chat box or turn on your mic. No, uh, okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.